So what is the fifth industrial revolution all about? For me, the fifth industrial revolution is about unleashing the true power of human and machine intelligence, while still taking into account other factors like sustainability, the environment, communities, income inequality. Seems it's actually a lot more about the mind rather than just the machine. In a sense, yes, but it is about all the different kinds of minds and intelligences, both human and artificial. And don't forget, AI was still present in the fourth industrial revolution, but for me, there, the rise of machine intelligence, deep learning, uh, robotic process automation, was taking all of the data from smart factories, sensors, the Internet of Things, and trying to optimize production. This is something else. This is about truly unlocking the potential of human intelligence. You know, if we actually go through the arc of history, we will find these five industrial revolutions. First, that was defined by steam as the key technology, then electricity, computers, sensors, and now finally, AI as a key technology. If you take all those five, it's not just been about the underlying technology, it's actually been about how have they fundamentally changed what work even means and how you go about executing that work. And this is what people often miss, because even if you look at the second stage where electricity and mass manufacturing came in, I mean, Henry Ford's genius was realizing you just didn't take a factory and pull a steam engine out and put an electric engine in. Electricity was an invitation to rethink the entire system of work. And if you look at the Highland Park facility, it was more agile, more distributed, it had the moving assembly line. It was a challenge to the traditional idea of work as everyone knew. We have gone from mechanical efficiency to computational efficiency to now cognitive efficiency. So I really love this concept of cognitive efficiency, but it kind of raises the question, what kind of work actually matters now? The answer to that used to be knowledge work, <laughs> but now, we have to reassess that question. Yeah, I mean, if you're an architect or an engineer or a musician or an artist, it doesn't matter now in this age of generative AI what you knew or know. It matters how good a question you can ask or what kind of prompt you can create. We used to focus on doing, executing, interacting. Now it's about exploring, connecting, and elevating the human experience. That redefines the very nature of work and how we need to go about our business. And this is something I think people should be able to embrace. Uh, it's a frightening concept that the most valuable thing you can do in your job is actually to redesign your own job. Uh, in that, trying to find the tasks and the activities that should happen unconsciously and automating them. Like the human body. I mean, there are so many things that happen autonomically, like breathing or digestion. If we can free ourselves from these tasks, it opens up the cognitive space to actually do things that are more interesting. If we're going to be redesigning work, we need to be accelerating breakthroughs and innovation. How do we do that? Well, if you look at how breakthroughs tend to happen, there's always an element of serendipity. You have this happy accident, whether it's graphene or the transistor, penicillin, or even the microwave oven, where something that wasn't planned happened and you had someone smart enough to recognize it for what it was. And this is really the power of generative AI because you can not only surface new insights at scale, but you're also now augmenting a human being with the capability to actually see the breakthrough for what it is. You know, if you kind of take it back to Industry 4.0, it was about digital twins for manufacturing plants. Now, with generative AI in Industry 5.0, it is about digital twins of people. Digital twins that can undertake autonomous action, autonomous insights, autonomous conversation, and autonomous execution. It's almost like we have an agent of ourselves that can act yes. on our behalf. And if you look at something like what Google DeepMind did recently, they essentially accelerated 800 years of material science R&D. And they created this system that identified 2.2 million new crystal structures, which could transform how we design everything from batteries to solar panels. With that as your virtual autonomous agent, truly anything is now possible. It is inevitable that humans and machines are going to be working together. It's no longer a question of if, it's more a question of how do you actually purposefully orchestrate to make it happen? For me, it has to come back to culture. But it's not culture that the way it has been defined to date. 
culture has to be thought of as a system of interactions. And these system of interactions are literally going to be the operating system of an organization tomorrow. I love this because it goes back to really the origins of artificial intelligence. When you think about the rise of cybernetics, which at its heart was trying to figure out how humans and machines would manage the dynamics of working together effectively. And therein lies the opportunity. Now that the fifth industrial revolution is upon us, it is not going to be enough to just do things better compared to yesterday. To survive tomorrow, things have to be done differently.